Okay, so the question says the angular position of a rod. Okay, uh, let me just, uh, I'm just going to doodle on the page. I'm trying to, uh, so it's uh, angular position. So it's uh, referring to this. Uh, let me call that theta. That's going to be a function of time. And that'll be um, 17 t squared radians from time t equals zero. Uh, I'm going to assume that t is in seconds. The question is a bit sloppy about units. <laughs> Another way to say it would be, I'm imagining this coefficient is actually 17 uh, inverse second squared. <laughs> uh, this is kind of a feature of, uh, well, you should be more careful with the units than this textbook question is. Anyways. Okay, the rod has two bits on it as shown in the figure, okay. One bit at half the distance and another bit at full distance where let me give a label for the full distance, L. Um, yeah, one at 10, yeah, okay. Um, it asks, what is the instantaneous angular velocity of the rod at t equals five Point five seconds. It looks like I'm using that value quite a bit, so let me give it a label of t1. And where it asks what is the instantaneous angular velocity, it's uh, meant to be a simple question, simple application of definition. So in the linear kinematics that you've seen way back <laughs> at the beginning of the semester, we introduced this definition of a velocity that velocity is the time derivative of position. And there is an um, analogy, comparison, between this linear translational motion and angular motion. That analogy, I hope, will help you memorize, remember, recall different formulas that relate to rotation. So the related expression when it comes to rotational kinematics. So we are looking at rotational quantities is, well, um, so we are given information about the angular displacement. And from knowing that you can get angular velocity by this analogous relationship. Angular velocity is the time derivative of angular position. You can say displacement or position uh, when you're taking derivative and your constant initial offset will give you zero anyway. So it's a simple application of this formula. You take the derivative of theta with respect to time and the expression you get, let me write it down here. Um, omega is the time derivative of theta so, you know, factor of two comes down, the power uh, formula. Um, so two times the 17 is 34. Um, <laughs> this time, 34. Oh, I guess it's still 34 uh, per inverse second squared, if we are being careful with the units. So 34 times t. So this is my expression for angular velocity as a function of time. So we just plug in what t1 is. So 34 times t1 and that will give you the answer in radians per second um, so you can get the answer <laughs> and uh, plug it in and in part of it's asking what is the angular acceleration of the rod and if you are confused hmm, why isn't it giving me at what time i hope that um, question is answered when you apply this um, analogous expression to the linear translational motion expression that acceleration is the time derivative of velocity. So the, the rotational version of that says angular acceleration is equal to the time derivative of angular velocity. So when you apply this expression, you get this, that angular acceleration being time derivative of angular velocity is um, just 34, the t to the first power, when you take derivative of that, you just get a constant one. So it'll just be 34 
um, and the unit should be radian per second squared. So, uh, so you, it, this is a constant angular acceleration motion. That's why they didn't have to give you the time. They can just uh, tell you. They, they can just uh, ask you for angular acceleration. And in this specific case, we did it. With this particular form of expression, it turns out that, oh, your angular acceleration is constant. So you don't have to specify at what time. Okay, um, let's keep going. So it's uh, asking in part C, what are the tangential speeds of the beads at t equals the same uh, t1 uh, time? And uh, so it's asking, so we do red, I, let me just uh, make this notation for myself. Red one is at distance of um, L over 2, L being 20 centimeters, or you know, 0 0.2 meters, when you want your final answer in terms of meters. And the blue bead, oh yeah, I think it's blue, but because of my highlight, it turned green. <laughs> yeah. The blue bead is at the distance of, of L. And this is one of those questions where it, once you have a good understanding of the of how to connect rotational quantities to translational quantities, it, uh, um, it, it becomes super easy. But it takes uh, some amount of time for people to gain that familiarity. And uh, I've done this lecture before, so I won't belabor this point. But it comes down to learning to relate the angular measurement with the um, uh, with the, the the displacement related quantities. And here, what you should remember is that if you are given a circle of radius r and you are trying to measure some angle theta, the way this angle is measured non-arbitrarily, as in not subject to any um, arbitrary conventions, is so that's the that's how we get the unit of radian, which is not a real unit at all. The way radian is defined is by relating this arc length hold that L, to the angle here. And the, um, ang the angle, when you are specifying it in unit of radians, is defined as this ratio of length, uh, the arc length divided by the radius of the circle that you are imagining this angular displacement is being measured in. The, and this is a... Um, this is a, a completely non-arbitrary, geometrically constrained definition. And the benefit of remembering this definition is it allows you to relate the tangential quantities, things like arc length, to the angle really easily. This arc length, in terms of the angle that you might be measuring, is given as r times theta. And this uh, relationship continues through all the other kinematical quantities. Um, so, you know, this arc length is really changing uh, position, delta x, uh, minding that, you know, the direction is changing. Um, so, um, if you want to know the angular velocity, that's the... Uh, so, if you want to relate the, the, the tangential velocity with the angular velocity, then you imagine taking the time derivative of this whole expression on both sides. Then left-hand side, you get tangential velocity. And on the right-hand side, r is constant. And the time derivative theta is omega, angular velocity. And the same deal with the acceleration in the tangential direction. And time derivative omega, angular velocity, is the angular acceleration. So, so once you fully internalize this, then finding the formula for this question is super easy. Um, the tangential velocity of red bead at this time is simply the, the, uh, the distance L over 2 times the angular velocity oh, that you already calculated, the angular velocity in part A. Um, tangential velocity of blue bead, blue bead will be the 
the distance L or the radius, the radius which is the L here, uh, times the angular velocity that you find in part A. And uh, plug in the numbers, uh, make sure you convert to meters per second, then that should be it. And the same deal for tangential acceleration of the bit. So here I can even uh, calculate the, the answer since my acceleration is 34. So the, um, the tangential acceleration of the red bit will be L over 2 or 10 centimeters or L over 2 is 0 0.1 meter. So 0 0.1 meter times 34 radians per second squared would be 30, uh, 3.4 meter per second squared. Now, if you are asking what happened to the unit of radians, well, the answer is radian is not a real unit. When you take this ratio, you see that um, any kind of unit quantity cancels out. The length unit in the arc length and the length unit in radius, they cancel out. Radian is not a true unit, it's more of a reminder for ourselves that what we are measuring is an angular quantity. So whenever it's convenient, we can skip it whenever it's convenient. And this is one of the cases where it's convenient. Because <laughs> once we are dealing with the tangential acceleration, we're not dealing with the angles anymore. So you can just omit it. So that's for the red bit and the acceleration of the, the tangential acceleration of the blue bead is um, the, should be doubled since it's at double the distance. So it should be 6.8 meter per second squared. And part E gets at what I was about to say. Uh, tangential acceleration is not to be confused with the centripetal acceleration. So when you imagine these beads moving in this circle, um, when we are dealing with uniform circular motion, we are specifically dealing with the cases where acceleration in the in this direction, the tangential acceleration was zero. That's what uniform uh, circular motion was dealing with. In this case, we are specifically not dealing with the uniform circular motion. There is tangential acceleration. And that's what my answer to part D was dealing with. And for part E, it's a, um, so everything that you have learned about centripetal acceleration, that hasn't changed. So we learned way back when the centripetal acceleration is equal to tangential velocity squared over R, and that remains correct still even when this tangential velocity is a function of time, you just take the instantaneous tangential velocity. So at time equals t1, you take the instantaneous uh, tangential speeds and you um, take square of it divided by radius and you are done. So <laughs> for uh, in centripetal acceleration of the red bead, you would say, all right, um, I have my instantaneous uh, velocity at the same time there. So uh, we read that I calculated above in part C squared divided by the radius, or in this case, it will be L over 2 for the red bead. And for the blue bead, exactly same calculation. Take the instantaneous velocity up there, square divided by uh, here, the radius would be L. So yeah, the part is there as a reminder that the other things you learned about circular motion, it, it, it's still valid. It doesn't, um, it's not completely undone just because we are dealing with a non-uniform circular motion. You just have to take the instantaneous velocity. So, I think that's it. Um, yeah, so let me just plug in the answers to um, B and D just to as a spot check that I didn't make any crazy mistakes. <laughs> so 34 and uh, 3.4, 6.8. And the rest I'll uh, leave it to you to work out. Uh, yeah, so yeah. I think this time is uh, randomized. So <laughs> I think I put in the only uh, numbers. This might be randomized as well. I'm not completely sure. Um, anyways, so yeah, so this uh, uh, covers all the um, bases for the uh, rotational kinematics stuff. Uh, that's mainly why I wanted to do this question.